In this video, let us learn what exactly is pre-rendering and why would we want it in our application. In my opinion, it is easier to understand pre-rendering by comparing a traditional React app with a Next.js app. So let's do that first. I have opened VS Code with two projects in the Explorer as you can see. We have React-Demo which is a simple React app generated using create react app. So in the terminal, run the command npx create react app followed by react hyphen demo to generate a similar project. The second project I have here is next hyphen demo, which is a basic Next.js app generated using create next app. You can run the command npx create next app followed by next hyphen demo to create a similar project. Now what I want to do is compare the page source or the HTML which is served to the browser from both these apps. Let's look at React first. Navigate inside the project folder and run the command yarn start. This opens the React app on localhost port 3000. When the page loads, we see the React logo, some text and a link to the React docs. If I inspect the element, we can see a div tag with id equal to root and within the div tag, all the HTML elements corresponding to the UI. Image, paragraph and an anchor tag. But let's take a look at the page source code by viewing the page source. Here, we only see a div tag with id equal to root. The image, paragraph and anchor elements are nowhere to be found. So the HTML page sent from the server is sort of empty and doesn't contain any data or content that we see in the browser. This is the behavior of a traditional React app. Now let's compare this with a Next.js app. In the terminal, press Ctrl C, navigate back to the parent folder and then navigate inside the next demo folder. Run the command yarn dev which starts the Next.js app on localhost port 3000. In the browser, we see some text, a few links and a footer. If I inspect element, you can see a div tag with id equal to double underscore next and within this div tag, we see the heading, a paragraph tag, different anchor tags and finally the footer. What I want you to focus on though is the page source code. So right click and view page source. To our surprise, we see the h1 tag, the paragraph tag, the four anchor tags for documentation, learn, examples and deploy. We also have the footer. This right here is the difference between a traditional React app and a Next.js app. By default, Next.js pre-renders every page in the application. But what does pre-render mean? Well, it means that Next.js generates HTML for each page in advance instead of having it all done by client-side JavaScript. In a React app, the JavaScript is loaded which then executes to mount the HTML elements onto the DOM. So when the page is served, we just have a div tag with id equal to root. Once the JavaScript for the page is loaded, it will execute in the browser, create the different DOM nodes and mount them onto the root div element. This process is also called hydration. In a Next.js app, the pages are pre-rendered or in simpler words, 
the HTML is already generated with the necessary data and then sent to the browser. The JavaScript would then load and make the page interactive. But the HTML is there to begin with. So pre-render just means render in advance of sending it to the browser. And pre-rendering is done by default in the Next.js app, which is why you see all the HTML elements in the page source code. Now the fact that Next.js decided to incorporate pre-rendering as a default feature raises a very important question in our minds. Why would we want to pre-render pages in an application? We can answer that question with two important points. The first one is that pre-rendering improves performance. In a React app, you need to wait for the JavaScript to be executed, which would then perhaps fetch data from an external API and finally render the UI. So there is a wait time for the user who can to a certain extent be pacified by showing a loading indicator. With a pre-rendered page though, the HTML is already generated and hence loads faster. So pre-rendering can lead to better performance. The second benefit about pre-rendering is that it helps with SEO. If you're building an application that is behind a login screen, search engine optimization might not be a concern to you. However, if you're building a blog or an e-commerce site, it is very important that search engines can index your content. With a React app, if the search engine hits your page, it only sees a div tag with ID equal to root. If it hits a pre-rendered page though, all the content is present in the source code, which will help index that page, leading to better search rankings. Now Google did improve crawling pages where the content is dynamically populated, like in the case of a React app, but it's not the same as crawling a page where the content is already present. So if SEO is of concern for your app, pre-rendering is definitely what you want. To summarize, pre-rendering refers to the process of generating HTML in advance with the necessary data for a page in our application. Pre-rendering can result in better performance and SEO. All right, now that we know the what and why of pre-rendering, the next question is how. How do we pre-render a page in Next.js? Let's learn about that in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.